Hey everyone, Nick DeRobertis here, teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to solve the first lab exercise on extending a simple retirement model. So this is the lab exercise that we're talking about here um, on the getting started with Python and Excel slides at the end. Um, and here the basic idea is that we've already built out this simple retirement model uh, with multiple different interest rates. And now we're trying to look at what if we also vary the savings rate and vary those two things together. So we're looking at each possible combination of the interest rate and the savings rate. How do we carry that out in both Excel and Python in a reasonable way where you're not having to repeat your effort of typing this formula over and over? So let's take a look at uh, the Excel implementation. So we can go ahead and work from our existing simple retirement model. Um, so here we already have the years to retirement being calculated for each one of these different uh, investment rates. Now we're trying to see, let's do the same thing, but with the savings rate and the combination of the two. Um, so the first thing that we probably want to do is go ahead and, and reformat uh, the layout of the output a little bit to be able to accommodate this because now we're going to have a table of nine different uh, values for the years to retirement and we got to have a uh, savings rate going along the other axis. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, control X or command X uh, to move these things over. Um, I'm going to move investment rates to there. I'm going to move years to retirement to here. I'm going to make savings rates here um, and we're going to be looking at uh, three different savings rates 10 percent 25 percent and 40 percent uh, so i'm going to go ahead and put those savings rates in here um, so then we're looking at our results coming in here um, so then uh or sorry results coming in here so um now we need to retype our formula because this existing formula that we have uh, is going to be based off of uh, this annual cash saved, uh, which now that's going to be uh, changing with each savings rate. So we can just calculate it uh, in line in the formula. Um, so we need to go ahead and redo the formula. But I'm just going to go and copy this one. You know, we've already got something that works. Uh, so let's just extend that rather than uh, starting from scratch. So then I'm just going to paste the formula. Um, and so now instead of where we're using the annual cash saved, um, instead we're going to want to do the uh, current savings rate times the uh, salary. Uh, and we know we're always using the same salary regardless of which one of these that we're calculating so that's going to be completely fixed in both directions uh, but then we have to think about the other references and the formula which way they should move and should not move so thinking about the investment rate right now we have that as a relative reference completely relative um, but we want that to move as we drag it to the right but we don't want it to move as we drag it down because we want it to stay in this row. So we want it fixed on the row, but not fixed on the column. Um, so here uh, F4 gets us, or Command T on Mac, gets us to now fixed in both directions. Um, and then doing it again, now we have the dollar sign just in front of the eight, that's just in front of the row, and therefore the row is now fixed while the column is allowed to move. So that's exactly what we want for the investment rate. And then coming to the savings rate, we want the exact opposite here. We want it to be able to uh, go up and down. So we want it to be not fixed. We want it to be relative on the row, uh, but we don't want it to move left or right. So here we want it fixed on the column. Um, so here F4 or Command T uh, three times. And that will get the dollar sign in front of the A, which is the column letter. And so the column is now fixed and the row is not, which is what we want. Um, and then desired cash, that we just have a single value. So that one was fine as it was. Um, and then this uh, 
this cash uh, saved, we should that should be coming in as a negative amount uh, because it's a payment in this formula. Um, so then with that, we go ahead and get an estimate of, you know, it would take 61 years to retire if you're only saving 10% of your salary and you were earning a lower investment return. Um, let's go ahead and get the formatting that we want on this before um, bring it out to the other cells. Um, and then I'm going to drag it over and then drag it down and we just have it completed everywhere. It's always using the savings rate and the investment rate uh, from that row and column. So we only had to type the formula once and it went everywhere. Um, and then of course, you know, you would want to reformat this output to then put all of this into a table uh, and make it more clear uh, what's going on here with uh, good, you know, alignment and sizing of columns and everything, uh, so you can actually see everything that's going on. So that's the Excel exercise, um, and then the Python part is next. Um, so also for the Python part, we can similarly uh, work off of the existing simple retirement model. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and go into the kernel menu and restart kernel and run all cells. That way it just runs everything in order so that, uh, you know, we have everything defined. We already have, uh, you know, the salary and the desired cash that we're going to need. Those are both already defined up there. Um, so now we can go ahead and, uh, you know, vary both uh, investment rate and savings rate um so then uh you know we already have this existing loop where we're going through each of the investment rates and looking at uh you know calculating um the years of retirement based off of that investment rate and then uh printing out a string which contains what the um years of retirement are and what the investment rate was so we can start from here and work off of this. Uh, of course, it's currently doing the same thing. And we're gonna want to make a couple of changes. Uh, so the first change being, we know now that we want to vary the savings rate in addition to the investment rate. Uh, so we can also do for S rate in savings rates. Um, and we already have investment rates defined, but we wanna um, define savings rates uh, here as the uh, 10%, 25%, and 40%. And then we're going to do for S rate and savings rates. And then all of this comes indented another time so that it executes uh, as part of the inner loop so that everything here will run you know, for each investment rate and then within that for each savings rate. So for three and three, it'll run a total of nine times this inner code. Uh, and then the other thing is we're currently using annual cash, which was calculated elsewhere, but now we're going to need to uh, calculate that within here uh, because it is changing every time based off of the savings rate, which is changing. Uh, so it's just going to be the salary times the current savings rate, which is our loop variable of S rate. Um, and then that is going to flow through to here. Um, so then if we run that, we do see that now we get all these numbers uh, and they do look like we're getting the same uh, answers that we got here in Excel, so that's a positive sign. Uh, but there's one other step here to make it more clear what's going on because right now our string um, you know, is just talking about the investment return. We don't know what's going on with the savings rate, which savings rate is associated with each year's retirement based off of the current string. Um, so then we would want to add that into this uh, string that we're printing out. Um, so if she earns uh, whatever percent return uh, and saves uh, S rate uh, with the zero decimal percentage formatting. Um, so and saves however many percent. So then when I run that again, um, then it becomes more clear what is going with what. Um, and again, we see, you know, with the lowest savings and the lowest investment return, it takes as much as 61 years to retire. Um, whereas 
with the highest return and highest savings rate, it's all the way down to uh, less than 27 years. So that is the initial lab exercise in both Excel and Python. Um, so thanks for listening and see you next time.